You're listening to the Productive Not Busy Podcast, where we show you how to do life in business, confident, focused, and with a plan so that you can make more money, have more free time, and less stress. Your host, Wayne Withersby, will uncover actionable hacks, strategies, tips, and insights you can use today to live a better, more productive life. It's time to boost your mindset, confidence, and your attitude. Here's your host, Coach Wayne. Okay, so we're going to follow up on our subject from last time, which was the discomfort zone. And I said that we were going to follow this one up with the discomfort system. So is it possible to truly become comfortable with being uncomfortable? I say absolutely. I want you to consider this. You're given an assignment. You're supposed to walk up and introduce yourself to 100 strangers. So at first, this might feel like a daunting task. So if you're any kind of introvert, the task might even feel like impossible, right? What you may not realize, though, is how long you can expect this discomfort to last. See, the first person you introduce yourself to is this experiment will be the hardest. You might be unsure what to say or how to make eye contact. You have no idea what the other person will say or do in response to your greeting. But as you keep going on this task, okay, you will soon find out something very interesting. After a handful of people, you'll start relaxing. If the responses you get are pleasant, you might even start enjoying this task to where the task actually no longer feels uncomfortable at all by the time you're finished. So what does this mean? Well, discomfort fades over time. The more we challenge ourselves, the easier it gets. This is especially true when we when you understand how discomfort works and how the steps to manage it happen. So by following this process, you'll learn how to navigate the discomfort zone so easily that its steps will almost become like a habit. You soon kind of just manage discomfort with ease. See, the trick is to choose your battles. You don't have to make your whole life uncomfortable to create positive change. Okay, in fact, you really shouldn't do that if you ask me. So if you're deciding to shake things up in your life, even in your work life, personal life, whatever, being in the comfort zone for a bit at home or in your relationship will give you somewhere to kind of retreat, right? Kind of to rest and recharge before going back in and tackling discomfort again the next day. So if you're ready, let's get started. Okay. Number one, you got to examine your discomfort. Before you can leave your comfort zone, you need to know where you're going, right? Choosing the area to focus on isn't going to be that hard, I promise. You start with paying attention to the things which make you uncomfortable. Try looking for these signs, okay? You're reacting physically to the suggestions of a certain change. All right, if you like kind of shrink up or wince every time someone brings up like that hot topic, like going back to school or stepping out of a relationship or meeting strangers, you already know you need to change, whether or not you've acknowledged it or not. Also look for other physical signs connected to this thought, such as maybe an upset stomach, um, a sudden need to run to the restroom or difficulty sleeping because you don't stop thinking about the topic. Some signs are more subtle than others, of course, such as having uh, like a I don't know, itchy chin, itchy nose, they say, um, when talking about this topic. So believe it or not, this is an automatic response to stress. It's called a reflex reaction. You don't even know you're doing it. And this, because it increases the blood flow to your face and other extremities. So next, your body language is already yelling, screaming, and kicking. No way. Well, we hold ourselves differently when we feel threatened. Right? You want to hunch. You want to cross your arms. 
right? Cross your legs. You might even physically start moving away from the person who suggests the very thing as if you're trying to gain distance from the idea itself. Think about it. The next one is you can't talk about it or you can't stop talking about it. If you can't find the words to discuss this or get choked up while you're discussing it, this is a signal you're definitely uncomfortable with the topic. So if someone asks you about it and your voice starts going higher and higher and higher, or you talk more rapidly than usual, using lots of gestures with your hands, this is a sign sometimes getting you worked up about the topic. It's definitely time to back up and notice what's going on. Once you've identified some of these possible areas where discomfort indicates some change is needed, go ahead and ask yourself those questions and to narrow your focus down on the specific issue which needs work. So what is making you so nervous about the idea of maybe facing a challenge? What aspect of this makes you most comfortable? Ask yourself that. Some questions will help you home in on the root cause of the discomfort. This is important because your approach from here on out will be shaped by just what problem you're trying to solve. So for example, you might think it's the prospect of a long and drawn out job hunt that is making you uncomfortable. When in truth, what you're really uncomfortable about is the feeling you, you don't have the skills to get the job that you really want. It's just an example. Once you think you've nailed down to your discomfort, it's time to get on the move and on to the next step. And that's to reflect on discomfort. There's no quick and easy way to go through this step. You have to take the time and do it well. So give yourself an hour or two and sit back and enjoy what you're about to discover about yourself. It's going to be interesting. Reflection is such a positive exercise. You finally have the time to sit down with your emotions and examine not just what you're feeling, but why you're feeling the way you feel. The biggest key to getting through this step is honesty with yourself. So be prepared to be really truthful as you go on that journey. So you start by creating the right space for understanding yourself, right? Choose a place that's calm, without interruption, free of distraction and noise. My coach has me play soft music. It helps keep me calm and centered. Or you can use noise canceling headphones, he said too, to block out the world if you need it. Next, you have to choose the best method of reflecting. For some, this involves journaling. For others, it may be a more matter of sitting with your thoughts and examining each one, dissecting it to see where it goes. Do whatever works best for you is all I'm saying. Now, once you're ready, it's time to concentrate on the very important question. Why are you ready to step out of your comfort zone? It's important to begin here. Do not skip this question. This will help you frame your goal and underscore your desire to change. It's all about affirming your decision to move into discomfort. And we'll give you an answer. You're going to come back to any time you feel sad or discouraged on your journey, okay? It's not the point of this. Now, how has your comfort zone held you back? Well, this could be answered probably in a couple of ways. In my opinion, by asking in general how your comfort zone has kept you from moving forward. So you got to underscore the need for change. This is confirmation that you can't stay where you are anymore. It just wasn't good for you. But if you can also answer this regarding the challenge that you're attempting, you'll discover roadblocks that have held you back from getting there. Why have you been holding back? How for, And how long? What made it easier to stay where you were than to move forward? So that emotion or pain is at the heart of the holdback, right? So unfortunately, you won't change a thing unless you first dismantle it. You'll need to spend some time reflecting or writing about the topic or, you know, giving yourself some free time to get rid of those feelings. If this doesn't work, you're truly having trouble letting go of the thing that's holding you back, try talking things over with a really close friend or a family member who can help guide you through these feelings. 
So if things seem particularly difficult, don't hesitate to get like professionally trained help, like a counselor or a professional who can help you go through the steps. Now, what is motivating you to move forward right now? This is so incredibly important. There's this is here's where you seize the change and make it your own, okay? Say these words out loud if you can. I am moving forward right now because and whatever your why is. Make this your anthem and battle cry. I'm telling you. Make it an affirmation or motto because this is your reason for making yourself uncomfortable in the first place. The whole key to this is taking an action. Talking about it, thinking about it, it's great. Moving forward and taking the first step. Good, bad, ugly, success or failure, take the first step. And then next, you got to see where do you see yourself? When you reach the step, you're done looking at the past. Instead, you're focusing your attention to the future. In order to succeed against a challenge such as facing the discomfort zone, you need more than a reason why you're doing this. You need to see yourself succeeding. There's a lot of power in this step, so it's absolutely crucial that you don't skip it. Visualization is one of those things that has gained much traction. A lot of studies have shown it to be incredibly effective for creating positive change. So what does this mean? Quite simply, the more you can visualize your future in detail, the more likely you will attain it. So for this step, you start with imagining two different futures. How about that? The first one, the first future, you'll have in five years if you do nothing at all. Just sit there and just waste away. What would really happen to you if you stayed in your comfort zone without doing a single thing? And what kind of life would you be leading? Would you be happy? What type of job do you think you'd have? And what friends would still be in your life? And what role would they play? Chances are, this doesn't quite look like the future you really wanted, does it? Well, if not, here's your chance to change your life. It's time to visualize the life you want to have right now. Keep in mind that this life you can only attain if you step out of your comfort zone. So for this future, you'll want to give visualization your best damn shot. Give it your all. You're not just using this vision to prove a point. I think you will, though. This is about crafting a blueprint, a plan for the future. You'll want to visit this visualization repeatedly as a reminder of where you're going and where you want to go and what kind of person you'll be when you get there. This is literally the stuff dreams are made of, really. Make it the last thing you think about before you close your eyes at night. Visualize it before you go to sleep. Right? I want you to begin with the area you're addressing right now. What discomfort are you facing? And what changes does this discomfort present? Now, using the answer to that question is the last step. What is it that I no longer want to be doing in my life? Whatever that is, smoking, drinking, married, unmarried, whatever. You can answer this by going through all the ways your comfort zone has been holding you back then. These are the things you will no longer allow to dictate your life. Now, take that and run with it. I appreciate your time. Have a great day. Be safe. Take care. Sell a bunch. And say something nice to somebody. Talk to you soon. You've been listening to the Productive, Not Busy Podcast. Please hit the subscribe and notification of new episodes button and visit us on social media like Twitter, Instagram, or TikTok for bonus content. 